Good morning, boys and girls. How many of you would agree that life isn't always happy, that there's some sad times in life? Would you agree to that? Sometimes there's sad things? Well, the story today, I'm going to tell a story about a cat named Charlie. And Charlie had a really sad time in his life, had some dangerous things that happened to him. In fact, Charlie's right here sitting in Mrs. J's lap. And that's the story I'm going to tell. But I'm going to start with the moral of the story. So if you pay attention to me right here, <laughs> the moral of the story, uh, there's a song that is sung by Matthew West, okay? And it's called Do Something. And in the song, the character shakes his fist at God when in the sight of bad and sad things and says, God, why don't you do something? And God says, but I did. I created you. That's what he says. And so is it possible that you can be the answer to someone's prayer when they are sad? Is that possible? Can you make bad things in the world better? If you come upon someone that is sad, maybe somebody at school, is there something you can do to make them happier? What can you do? You smile at them, you can hug them, you can be their friend, you can pray for them. There's a lot of things we can do to make the bad things in the world better. So today's story is about Charlie, okay? Not, this is, by the way, a new story. I mean, it's just happening. It's still happening. And it started only a few weeks ago, not so many weeks ago, in Tennessee or in the Knoxville area. Somebody was driving down the road, down the highway, behind another car. And out the window, they threw two kittens onto the highway while the car is going down the road. God, why don't you do something? But he did. He created the people behind them in another car that stopped and picked up these two kittens, two black kittens. They were two brothers. And they t but then they had a situation. They couldn't handle the cats. They didn't know what to do with the cats. And so they took them to a local shelter. And so here was Charlie and his brother Maverick in the shelter, well, in the shelter, you know, Charlie, you know, he bumped his head on the road and he had boo-boos on his head and he was hurt. And at the shelter, they, they fixed him up, you know, and gave him medicine and made him feel better. But in the shelter, there's a lot of animals in the shelter that were looking for a home because he got thrown away from his home. And so he needed rescue. So I have a daughter named Julia who's going to school in Tennessee. And she just happened to be visiting my sister who lives just east of Knoxville. And my sister had just resurrected a shelter that had went down the tubes. And that's where Charlie ended up. And my sister, Aunt Honey, said, Julia, why don't you come to the shelter just to visit? <laughs> and Julia is walking among the cages and this skinny black leg and claws came out and was grabbing for Julia. And Julia looked at Charlie and Charlie looked at Julia and they blinked at each other and Julia said, what's with him? And they told her the story about Charlie and she made the mistake. Well, I don't know if it was a mistake, but she took the cat out and held it and she couldn't go any farther. And so Julia sent me a picture on my phone, a picture of Charlie. And she said, Dad, look what I did. And I said, no, you didn't. She said, yes, I did. And I said, you're teasing me. And she, the next picture she sent me was a piece of paper Paper. It was the adoption paper and it said something like, I, Julia Jadamski, swear by God that I will take care of this cat for the rest of my life, something like that. <laughs> but she has a problem. She can't take the kitten to Southern Adventist University, she can't have the kitten in the dorm. So what are we going to do? <laughs> so she brings him home to Newmarket, Virginia, and he gets to our house. Well, by that time, his boo-boos on his head are healing. But he had been to the vet down there, and he got sick from some of the cats that had been to the vet too. And he got pneumonia. He got very sick. He could hardly breathe. And we thought we were going to lose him again. He said, God, why don't you do something? And he said, but I did. I created Dr. Street at Newmarket Veterinary Clinic, and we took him up there, and Dr. Street gave us medicine to give to Charlie. And over a long period of time, Charlie got a little bit better, a little bit better. Just a week ago, we went to a tournament in Tennessee, soccer and volleyball tournament, and we needed somebody to take care of the cat the whole time we were gone. What are we going to do? Charlie rode on the big bus, the SVA bus, back to Knoxville so she, my sister, could take care of him, and then on the way back we picked him up and took him home. Do you know what? Charlie was lost and now he's found. Charlie was sick and now he's well. Charlie was hurt and now or he was without a family, and now he has a family. All because of a lot of people in the, 
in the face of bad things happening in the world? When we could have said, God, why don't you do something? God says, but I did. I created you. I created you. And a lot of people did little things for Charlie. And now Charlie has a forever family. And Julia will never get him back. Because we've invested so much love in him. And now he's all well. And he thinks he owns the house. So this is Charlie. So the lesson of the story is, in the face of everything that bad that happens in the, in the world, if you are confronted with it, you can be the answer to prayer and make it better. And another lesson, and I might get in trouble for this, ask your mom and dad to take you to the local shelter. Just to look, just to look, because you know your mom, and, your mom goes shopping just to look, doesn't she? <laughs> and if you see a little animal there that needs rescued, and you, just say, and you hear your mom say, God, why don't you do something? You look at your mom and say, but he did. He rescued us. You may go back to your seats now. And if you want to, you can touch Charlie. <laughs>